What's up, family? It's April Love, your host of Just Breathe with April Love. And I'm so excited to be here with you today. Feeling really good. Got a lot of vitamin D this week, so I'm feeling really energized. But I have an amazing guest. I'm so excited to share her with you. Um, Dr. McCabe Mooring. She is a PhD, a holistic doctor, and vegan nutritionist. She has lived, studied, and worked in West Africa, the Middle East, and the United States for more than 25 years. I heard so much about her before I even met her, but I want to have her expound a little bit on what she's doing and what she's going to share with us today. Welcome. Thank you, April. Thank you. I feel so honored to be here. Wow. (laughs) I'm glad you could be here. Yes. So you are here eradicating illnesses, like, naturally. Based Mm -hmm. on lifestyle, which we all... Tell us about it. Okay. Well, as you said, my name is Dr. Makeba Mooring. I like to go by the hashtag Dr. Makeba. Um, It's nothing that I do. I don't eradicate illnesses. I assist the human body and mind in eradicating illnesses. Okay. Through lifestyle, through nutrition, through herbs through what's now considered vibrational medicine, a.k.a. energy medicine. Yes. So I help people to align their bodies with natural sources in order to eradicate disease. And, of course, it is a process. <laughs> Love that. Now, I have been saying this the whole pandemic, that, okay, now all of a sudden we're shut down. Um, people are, like, in a frenzy about their health, their, mm-hmm. their immune system. But... I'm here to tell you, being a, a cancer survivor myself, that we were in a state of health crisis for a number of years prior to COVID. So why is it now that everybody's ringing the alarm and weren't t- talking about all of these other chronic illnesses we were facing decades before today? Well, I can sum it up in one word, which may seem like it's going to be a little out of the way, but it's really not. It's the time that we're in. Mm-hmm. And as of December 2020, Give or take a few months, we actually entered into a new period of time, which is called the age of the Aquarius. I am not making this up. You can Google it. So this is a time that's defined as, exactly, (laughs) defined as when um, humanity will rise in their consciousness. And all that means is that they will begin to use more of their brain power. So you've probably heard most of your life that we only use about 10% of our brain. And why? Well, actually, a lot of the lifestyle things we do prevent us from being able to use more of it, which, of course, has an immediate effect on your overall health. Case in point, when I went to school many years ago in elementary school, you don't see this anymore. You used to see fluorescent lighting in the schools. Fluorescent lighting is one of the major causes for a lot of mental dysfunctions, including ADD. So as society got more conscious because it doesn't have the full spectrum of lighting, therefore it does not activate the proper chemicals and neurological functions within the brain, and it actually impedes them. As society got more educated on these things, they began to eradicate fluorescent lighting just like they did asbestos. So and now lead. A, And wow. lead. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we haven't even gotten into the nutrition yet. Right. We're just gotten into the things that are commonly used in Western societies, particularly here in America, that have been so adverse to our health. So So now, to answer your question, my theory is everyone gets stuck at home with their kids and with themselves. Mm -hmm. With their kids, with themselves, and with their own thoughts. And we learned a whole lot, not Mm -hmm. just as a country, but as a world. But definitely as a country, there is like a global movement now and rise of consciousness. And the only way you rise your consciousness is you begin to become aware of things. (laughs) aware of what you put in your mouth, aware of what you're watching on TV, aware of what you're thinking. So that's my theory about what happened or See, is happening. I told you guys, <laughs> I'm, bringing, I'm bringing the big guns out. <laughs> we want to add value. And the thing is, you, you, we perish for lack of knowledge. So I want to keep digging. Okay, so let's talk about, because, I mean, this is basic, but people just don't know. Like, because I see it. I had to do a little, um, I studied, um, did a course in um, integrative nutrition Uh at the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. So I had a little exercise where I had to just go and monitor, you know, looked at people and just looked at what they purchased. Uh And I just went to a Publix and just looked at people, what they put in their carts. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) these people really are eating. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like just all, nothing had any nutritional value. So can we kind of tap into how does the lifestyle, our lifestyle and adjustment of life, because every time you talk to a trainer or a nutritionist, they right. say it's about the lifestyle. It's not about doing a bad diet or things like that. Uh-huh. You have to shift your entire lifestyle to something new. How do we do that? Where does that, how, how do we trigger that? How does that, the regular person just say, well, you know, let me just stop eating these Fruit Loops and figure this thing out? Well, you know, I think understanding of everything is important, not just the education, because I always say that if education was enough, we wouldn't be the sickest, fattest country on the planet. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So obviously information is not enough. Right. But the ability to be able to actually educate and for people to understand education, you know, case in point, many, I don't believe that, like you said, when people just go fill their grocery cart mm-hmm. And a lot, a lot of that is just to due to culture and due to environment. Right. And I know I've heard other people say, well, everyone has the ability to have education, but it, it, it really doesn't work like that. Because if it did work like that, we would be the healthiest, most mm-hmm. prosperous country on the planet and wouldn't have the highest case of obesity. So again, what's happening now, because education is so much more broad mm-hmm. because of the advent of the internet, and now the advent of social media. People are hearing things uh, when it comes to lifestyle that they did not hear before. Mm -hmm. And it causes them to think. And what I call say is it causes uh, like a snaps in the brain to go off. Mm -hmm. And now when you pick up something and you read there's LFD red dye in it, which Mm -hmm. we've been seeing for years, and you've probably heard someplace in the back of your mind that that's been associated with cancer, yes. you probably say, well, why would I choose this? Why wouldn't I choose something that has beetroot in it? So mm-hmm. to me, it's just that now that the advent of the Internet has come mm-hmm. and social media, it's really a wonderful thing because it's no reason to be in the dark anymore. You right. have the opportunity. It's just not the Dr. McCabe's or people who think, you know, us consider at one point, People like myself and the lifestyle that I've maintained, they considered it very extreme. So Right. And they always tell that story like in order to be vegan or to eat healthy, it's so expensive. Yeah. Well, it's a lot less expensive now. That right. is definitely not the case now. But the thing of it is that that whole theory is debunked mm-hmm. because you're either going to pay up front or you're going to pay the price of not taking care of your health on the back end. So case in point, I help diabetics. I help those with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is one of the things that I consider as a holistic doctor one of the easiest things to reverse in my mind because it's almost 100% lifestyle related. 100 percent. So that is something that's immediately in your control and in anyone's pocket. So you can either put high valued food and lifestyle and study that up front. Else you will pay the price later in the co-pays and the drugs oh God, yeah. and the, and the um, yeah. decrease of the quality of life mm-hmm. is much more expensive. You know, my father used to say to me a long time ago. He said, think about it. Why would you put on the most expensive clothes and the most expensive shoes, then have the mindset of when it's time to buy your food? And this was before the vegan evolution, what I call is going on right now, the vegan. Re- when right. it comes time to buy your what goes in your body, the thing that's going to empower your organs or either disease your organs. You purposely look for the cheapest things and you do no education on what those ingredients are on the back. He said it really doesn't make sense. Then you look up surprised when you're suffering with this degenerative illnesses or this degenerative illness. He said just consider it. So, and this was before we've entered now into a time where veganism and those things have become quite popular. So things are a lot less expensive. So we got to get into the mindset because I um, actually did my own little, <laughs> I did a little little something the other day. And um, Oreo, you should be shaming yourself. There's nothing. <laughs> <They're> good. <laughs> there's nothing real about Oreo. Even the chocolate is artificial. You can't go get some, you can't get real chocolate. It's artificially fa- flavored. And then the, the part we love in the middle, got some GMOs, and it's a lot going on in an Oreo. 
So I'm just like, so you read that, but people still like, well, you know, I'm going to do everything in moderation. Like, it's a mind thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 my transparent self, am a sugar addict. I know it. I'm not a big, like, baked goods kind of person, but I will literally, and especially, you know, certain times I'm, a, right. I'm like, I, I need a... I need a this, I need a, you know, I need a Reese cup, I need something. But how do we, how do we get that, that, that mind to, to, to click in and just really just, well, to Because you know you. better. You say you know better, you do better. Not all You're the not time. the only sugar addict sitting here. Right. <laughs> I've had to break my sugar addiction a few times. But the thing is, I'm conscious of it. Okay. And I do things about four times a year to break it. Via okay. fasting, and we'll talk about that, right. you know, later. So the thing is to be conscious of it. The second thing is sugar is the, the most addictive thing mm. in Western society, particularly here in America, because, as you know, um, carbohydrates mm-hmm. convert into yeah. sugar, and then sugar is in everything. Yes. And it acts as a scavenger in the body, and it eats up all the minerals and all the Ooh, good scavenger. stuff. So it has a lot of issues to it. The first <laughs> thing is you're aware of it. Okay. And I want to say something. I've been working with people in a few different countries for decades now. And one thing that I've learned about us in Western societies, which I will speak for myself as an American, I'll speak for Europeans, I'll speak for Israelis as I lived in Israel. I haven't, for the most part, seen that that mindset of everything in moderation ever work. I've never seen it work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for success. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for making your money. It doesn't work for raising children. And it certainly doesn't work for when it's your health. A little cyanide poison, a little bit by little bit, is very dangerous to the human body. That is not how the human body works. Right. I have not seen that work. Now, Mm. I want to quote something because I'm so happy that the, um, I don't know if he's even mayor yet, but the mayor-elect of New York, and I don't want to go too much in it, but he's vegan, or he adopted a vegan lifestyle in order to heal himself, and he had some serious degenerative illnesses. Now, one of the things that I liked about his response when he was questioned about what does he do, he said, we're not getting ready to go tick for tat. What I'm telling you is I took on a plant-based lifestyle for a period of time, and it dramatically improved my health. Mm. That's what I'm saying. So if you see me eat a little fish here and there, if you see me now, I got the Oreo. I have adopted this to make that switch. Right. And I thought that was so wonderful. As someone, and honest, yeah. Yeah, someone who's been vegan nearly 40 years. So the thing of it is, it's never healthy to put a little bit of poison in your body all right. the time. Right. Because that's the only thing disease is. Disease is nothing mythical. Disease comes from a collaboration of poisons that the body could not detoxify as quick as it was going in. Therefore, the body had to localize the toxins in the body so the organism, which is you, Right. does not instantly die. It's a really a good thing. Mm. It's really a good thing because it's saving our life and giving your body time to go back and deal with it. Now, if you don't deal with it, right. it goes into what we call chronic illness. Oh. That means long-term, which usually goes into degenerative illness. But degenerative illnesses did not pop out of the sky. It came from that same theory Mm -hmm. of you could just stay in between and do a little of everything. Wow. That's why in order to eradicate it, you keep hearing this term detoxify, detoxify. But that's all the body does. The body has a function. That break fast, you're supposed to have fast for about 9 to 12 hours Mm. because now the body's in a detoxification cycle. Mm -hmm. And instead of loading poison into it, the best thing to do is go along with the body's natural cycle, consume something and practices that helps that, which I can tell you what that is. And now it's done that natural detoxification cycle. It should eliminate. That's when it does the most of its elimination and it goes in. But we've come from a lifestyle, particularly our generation, that it was just poison, poison, poison all day yeah. long. From the light you walk to the, what you drink, the mm-hmm. sodas, the, yeah. the this, all day long. And then shocked when you're 40 and you have all of these horrible conditions mm-hmm. going on and you can't think. Right. Brain, that 
That brain mm-hmm. fog is real. That is real. So, so that's what it's about. I mean, my thing is taking control of that because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how successful you are and what kind of car you drive. And you just, okay, so just make sure that, you know, you don't need to go fund me when you, because you're, you're definitely going <laughs> to, you're definitely yes. going to be out of here if you maintain that kind of lifestyle where there's no nutritional value. There's nothing that you put in your body, like you said, that is full of toxins. Yes. Full, and the body is so smart. Like we have these the, the liver and the kidney and everything that's just supposed to be just yes. doing its job and, mm-hmm. and, and cleaning the body. Mm-hmm. But it's just like after a while, it's just like, well, mm-hmm. what you gonna do? You're gonna keep feeling it. <laughs> you're just gonna keep doing it. Yeah, I'm gonna trying to give it, so. you a chance. So I've... then that's why a lot of mm-hmm. people leave here, especially in our community, the renal failure. Yes. Diabetes and all this their that that kidneys like I, I give up. Or that liver is like I I, I can't uh, you know how how much how much more uh, E and J can I take <laughs> you mm-hmm, know what I'm saying it's mm-hmm, just like the mm-hmm. you're just you know so let's I want to I want this to be a radical revival of change I don't want it to be trendy oh we you know I'm vegan because it's it's cute but because I want to really see generations I want to see my my children grow up I want to see my grandchildren I, you know what I'm saying like. Right. You're supposed to have a quality of life. We're yes. here for a quality of life. And that's what this podcast is all about. So help us, Dr. McCabe. Where, <laughs> where, do, we, where do we start? Like I'm sitting here, people, you know, our, our listeners or wherever you're listening, in your car, at home, I know they want better. The majority yes. of people want better, you know, because now I know even in my family and my, my circle of influence, a lot of them are like, they, they feel good about saying, you know, I'm not diabetic. I'm, I'm pre-diabetic. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's something. Right. They're to the point now that's that the bragging. they yeah. give away metformin. Like, you don't even have the paper metformin anymore. It's just wow. like, like, oh, you give giving... Because we know you're coming to insulin and you're going to pay for the insulin. <laughs> but yeah. right now, it's just metformin, you know, because we want you to keep eating what you're eating or whatever. It's weird. It's just like, it's almost like a diabolical plan of demise. But And then we've adopted those things by saying, you know, it just runs in my family. No, it doesn't. That menu runs in your family. Exactly. <laughs> that that Ex- lifestyle runs in your family. Scientists have long ago proven that's not true. Right. Diabetes does not run in a family. High blood pressure, you did not inherit that. What you inherited was the same thought process of your parents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? So everything starts from here. Right. And that, that's been proven. That had been said many years ago. What you inherited was the same mindset. Right. And that takes some time to break. Mm-hmm. And if you go, first thing I advise, um, seven habits for highly effective people. Okay. So when you think about it, I know that, that down, even guys. as a <laughs> vegan, in my reality, I had been vegan for quite a while, and I myself developed um, a painful condition due to stress, due to eating too much sugar, you know, mm-hmm. due to this and that. And so because I was already vegan, I had to take it to the next level for my body to detoxify because my body was already familiar with veganism. You always have to take something to the next level. And this is one reason why I really like dealing with athletes because athletes understand, Mm -hmm. overstand this concept. Your body plateaus. Well, it does the same internally. It's just a muscle. This esophagus is a muscle. The whole digestive system is a muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So because I had already been vegan and I had a higher, my body was already vibrating at a higher level due to the eating um, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it was just wasn't the eating lifestyle. I'm actually pretty holistic in my veganism. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to elevate that for it to heal. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I had contemplated. I knew about it. I went ahead on and became a raw foodist. Now I'm making a point with this. Okay. I had to elevate it. I said, okay, I'm going to take out all all cooked food. And this is not to say this is where everyone needs to start. But for me, it's where I needed to start in order to elevate it. It ended up being extremely beneficial because then my body really began to dump and unload. So the first step is just breaking the habit and know that you need to do it. You know, I used to say there is no way that this piece of bread or this is getting ready to control my reality. There is no way that I'm going to let my hand that I put to my mouth control the quality of my existence. It's Mm, not going to happen. I've worked with so many people. I think it's so sad 
There is no way. you. There isn't a spiritual way. There isn't a religious way. I can come to you from every angle that I am going to allow this, but it doesn't mean that I haven't fallen into my own little habits. The difference is knowing that I am the one who caused it and I am the one who have the power to change it. Mm. So that's where I tell people to start. Because for many, many years, I was hearing diabetes was inherited. So because that was a mindset, when you literally ate it, literally, because that was a mindset, it gave a pass mentally. Remember I said everything started from here. Right. To not even try. To accept the demise. And now we're all going to go cry because you're still eating the pork chop in the cake right. with all the dyes and the I'm synthetic washing the sweet tea. <laughs> You're washing it down with the sweet tea and the soda. You're overweight. You're not exercising. And now we're supposed to all sing the hymns, you know, when you get your leg cut off. Oh my or God, when yes. you start going blind. Yeah, you need an oxy dragon or oxygen you need, around. When and, all of this yes. is within, <laughs> or much of it, mm -hmm. the vast majority. I'm not even going to say all for anyone out there who wants to contradict this. I only say this because it's not just proven. I've worked with, um, at this point, a few thousand of people. And several hundred of people helping to reverse this very condition. So it all starts with mine. So what I say is to evaluate where you're at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Evaluate. Evaluate where you're at. Where you're at. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. You have to. That's the first thing of being honest. There is no dis-ease that I've ever witnessed mm -hmm. that I can see that cannot be reversed. The body is an amazing it, it it still can't be replicated. Mm -hmm. The most sophisticated computers cannot replicate the power of the human mind, right. which controls every organ. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing is take an evaluation. The second thing is take two things a week that you know are toxic. It doesn't even take rocket science. You pick up the chips, read the back. If you can't read it, don't eat it. And what I mean by that, if you don't know what dextro minus sodium glycode is, you probably don't need to eat it. And if you <laughs> feel right. like you do, research that chemical formula and see the effects that it has on the human body and also the earth and animals, and you mm -hmm. might change your mind. Okay, so this is what I'm saying, that being aware of things snaps something. It's not enough to hear yeah. Dr. McCabe say it. Or you say it. Right. But when you read that, it's like, why would I put that into my body? Right. Case in point, my children who were born vegan, three sons, natural childbirth, born vegan, loved sugar. That I believe that wasn't just inherited from my DNA, which actually you change when you change how you think. Wow. But because we're human, it takes about 21 days to do something different for it to click. It's no different with your health and habits. And I used to get them things, and although they were dates and they were figs and they were natural cookies and even natural cakes, it was still added sugar. Right. And I didn't know what was wrong with these kids because they would embarrass me and go out and just clean out the place like I didn't feed them. But <laughs> they, they, those boys, I'd be like, oh, my gosh. But, and you know what? It just occurred to me one day. Mm -hmm. I said, talking about cookies, if I buy a whole pack, they eat the whole pack in a day. Three boys. They, it's gone. It's a wrap. So it occurred to me, who said that cookies were a treat? Why am I going with this same paradigm that mm -hmm. has harmed the world? Right. Why am I buying my children sugar for treats when I know they don't have the self-discipline? They're not going to do it. I all. said, <laughs> I'm training them. Although we're vegan, they were born vegan. I said, who said that that was a treat? So you know what I did? I just stopped buying it. And instead, I, I remember, I bought a dehydrator. And this was way before it was popular. Those are very inexpensive guys. I would buy the apples and stuff, and they would have so much fun putting the apples in a dehydrator at night, and then taking them out. Mm. And it just hit me one day that the very same thing I teach about, I'm replicating. It may be a little bit healthier, right? but I know that they have a problem. So 
it's going to greatly limit it because it's not going to be in the house. So my suggestion is if you just took two things out of your nutritional lifestyle that you know are unhealthy. Right. The first one I would say is if you're drinking unhealthy drinks. Yes. It's no reason. Yeah. Just drink water. If it's soda, oh, <laughs> that thing is horrible. Oh, yeah. You can switch. Sugar and chemicals. Oh. Yes. Do just water. And then take something else. Because if you do that, within three weeks, how much would you have taken out? You would have taken six things out. Then take it to the hmm. next level. The next level is have two to three days a week that you are only going to eat fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Plant-based, vegan. Yes. Hmm. So this is the only way that I've seen effective. All that, do it a little bit, a little bit. This is how you do it a little bit to save your life. And it also coincides with you doing other things because now you're training your brain. Right. And as your brain does this, you may just pick up that book you said you were going to write several yeah. years ago. You may just start Because that brain fog is fading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, because um, everybody's now, everybody needs Adderall. Nobody can focus. Isn't that something? Everybody got ADD. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and, you know, I think that's, I, I have my feelings about that. But mm-hmm. <laughs> Nice, 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 nice. So how, so how do you work with people? How can people find you? Because, I mean, we, we could, man, <laughs> it's like, this needs to be a, you have a whole curriculum. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, but I hope you guys are triggered. And I hope that you see yourself in this and know that, you don't have to stay in that stuck place. You don't have to keep that belly. You don't have yeah. to be that sluggish. You know, these joints don't have to, you don't give out on you. It's not It's not mandatory that you're going to either be diagnosed with high blood pressure or diabetes once you're over 50. And your knees can actually not have to be replaced. There's a lot of, yeah, we believe, we've believed a lot of things that need to be debunked. But um, so how do you work and how do they find you and get more of this priceless information? Oh, well, thank you. So how I work is a lot of, most of my clients now actually are by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a set clinical location. I go, I do a few things. I do house colds, but those are my high plan clients. Yeah. (laughs) Yet I also do work in somewhat of a clinical environment here where I, people come to me and I assess their state of health according to where they want it to be, Mm -hmm. and I create a personalized program for them. I am not just considering their state of health. Mm -hmm. I'm considering their mental state as well. Okay? So to me, what is the point of telling someone to go vegan? When I first became vegan, I gained a lot of weight because I didn't know how. Right. And this was 36 years ago. Okay. Okay? I was vegetarian first. I was only eating only bread and cheese. (laughs) <laughs> and hallelujah, I was a cheerleader because then the weight, I was like, okay, yeah. something's wrong here. Right. And it had not struck me. And I took it on my own to reread a book called Survival in the 21st Century, of which Dick Gregory um, did the foreword. Oh. Then I was like, okay, I cut out everything. Wow. And Cold I, turkey. Mm-hmm, I cut out. I, I already wanted to do it. Mm, I okay. didn't know about wheatgrass, and it was it back then they called them natural hygienists. That was really the generation before me, but okay. that is the healthiest way to do it. Okay. Okay, that's the healthiest way to do it. So what I do is I create programs for people according to the goals they need to get with their health, with their mind, and we get to a success point. I've been highly, highly successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I deal with everything from a flu to improve performance to men to diabetes, high blood pressure. Infertility? Uh, infertility, yes. Yes, fibroids, I, all these things. I, I deal with yeah. fibro. As a matter of fact, when I first returned to the States 15 years ago, fibro- my first client was with fibroid clients because mm. they were people that I knew, a um, uh, young lady that I knew from my childhood and she was advised to basically have her whole womb whipped out. And I said, that's absolutely yeah, ridiculous. That's their so diagnosis. as you right. So that's and we were able to successfully reduce her fibroids. And it took her about two years, but she did get pregnant. Oh. And 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 had a child after that. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I do. The next thing is everyone can um check out my podcast, The okay. Doctor, the Dr. McCaba Show. Okay? Mm-hmm. 
That and it's is. good, guys. It's yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. So we have um, a lot more media things coming. Be looking out on YouTube. We also have a book that will be coming out very soon. Okay. But right now, if you tuned into The Dr. McCabe Show on everything that plays music, so it's on Amazon, it's on Alexa, it's on mm-hmm. Spotify, you can go back and listen to the past shows, and then you can also contact me. And if you wanted to contact me directly... Um, Dr. McCabe Mooring at gmail.com. Nice. Uh-huh. I think we need to get you back on here with a Q&A <laughs> kind of thing. Yes. But um, this has been awesome. Like I said, it's all about added value. It's all about putting you in the position to win and have the holistic quality of life that you so richly deserve what you're here for. You're not here to suffer and stand in line at the pharmacy. And <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? I'm April. I want to say something. Okay. So, You know, this has been debated over the Internet, but all I know is what he said. We didn't say it. He said it. And this was Steve Jobs. And um, I'm not looking at my phone or um, some type of device right now, so I can't quote it verbatim. Mm -hmm. But there's something known on the Internet as the deathbed quote of Steve Jobs. And it's been it's been debated that title. But nevertheless, these were his words that he wrote down on paper. Um from what I believe it was just days before he expired, Mm -hmm. okay? And what he expressed is that he had a lot of regrets in life. But his biggest regret, and if he could do it over, was not studying the book of healthy living. Mm. And he compared it to as he's looking at the the lights in the hospital wrong. He said, this money's not, basically what I got is this money's not doing me any good. Mm -hmm. How did I miss that? How did I miss the most valuable thing to my existence? Wow. And so, kind of want to leave with that. (laughs) I mean, and he left the billions right here. Yes. There's nothing he can do with them on the other side. So please let that be um, a testament to what you need to do in order to you working real hard and yeah you're working real hard so you deserve it we deserve it we deserve good living we deserve a healthy life and we have to just commit to it we're going to commit together so just stay tapped in with us you know subscribe um on your favorite platform share it with a friend and we're going to always add value and we are concerned about your mind your body and your spirit right here on just breathe with april love and Thank you so much, Dr. McCabe Morning. I knew this was going to be amazing. I knew it was going to be a lot to put yes. into a small period of time, but I think it was enough to really impact and to trigger change. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. It is such a pleasure. And to the world, we love you much. Let's make it our best life. That's right. We'll <laughs> see you soon.